if a pilot is, uh, is flying around the curve of the Earth, then it sh he should be dipping the nose down um, every, every five minutes. He should be dipping the nose down to, to stay around the curve. But the thing that really um, uh, got me interested was, as you say, the gyroscope. In, in a plane, there is a, an, an artificial horizon, okay, and it's based on a gyroscope. And if you spin a gyroscope um, on a surface, it will want to stay upright. You can twist and tilt the surface as much as you like, the gyroscope will stay upright. So, if a plane has a gyroscope and it starts um, following the curve of the Earth, mm. the gyroscope will stay upright which means your, the uh, um, artificial horizon will start to, to roll backwards. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's absolute proof that a plane flies over a flat surface rather than a curved one. Because um, I asked the pilot um, on my last flight, um, you know, does, do you ever notice the, the, auto, um, the artificial horizon uh, rolling backwards? He said, no, no, but the artificial horizon has complex electronics in it to, to make sure it knows where it is on the Earth and it compensates. But I went to... Um, the manufacturer of the artificial horizon and they confirmed to me that it's completely mechanical nothing electronic in it at whatsoever so it's it's literally just a gyroscope that can freely move so that right there is proof to me that um you know planes fly over a plane none of it makes sense the, the problem is that we're taught as children um you know uh, this this ball earth lie and um you know you might ask as a child you know um what about the people in Australia? You know, they're standing on the bottom of the globe, won't they fall off? And your teacher says, no, no, gravity. And you go, oh, okay. And you never, never go back to that question. But when you go back to it as an adult and start looking at it with a critical eye, right, the whole thing falls apart. As you say, the, the globe is, is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's um, a leading astronomer in America. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. Tells us that that the Earth is not a perfect circle; it is actually an oblate spheroid. It's squashed, mm -hmm. and uh, and wider at the equator. Yeah. So, Earth throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere; it's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So my question to him would be, why is there land at the equator? Because um, water will move more readily than rock. So if the Earth is spinning, the water will be um, collected at the equator. I mean, if you spin a wet um, tennis ball, okay, if you spin a wet tennis ball, the water shoots off mm -hmm. at the equator, essentially. So all the water will be um, gathered around the equator. So why is there land at the equator? doesn't make any sense. Um, the other thing that's uh, about s the spinning Earth is looking at the stars. Now, um, directly above the axis of spin is the pole star, Polaris, okay? Um, directly over the North Pole. And um, we're told that the reason that all the stars spin around the, uh, the, the North Star is because the, the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Okay, seems to make sense because if you put a long exposure camera uh, pointing at the North Star, you'll see um, the stars will make perfect circles around, perfect star trails. The only problem is the, um, the Earth is also orbiting the Sun at 67,000 miles an hour. Okay, the Sun is moving, dragging the Earth and all the, all the planets up that way or that way. Um, at 600,000 miles an hour. So why do we see perfect circles? You know, because that's the slowest speed, <laughs> that's um, uh, slowest motion in that, in that mix. And, and yet the, the Earth is moving 67 times faster that way and 600 times faster that way. So you should see the stars do all sorts of strange mo um, motions, but you don't. You only see them make these perfect circles. That tells me that it's the stars that are moving, not the Earth. The, the thing is, what, what the scientists will give you is calculations and, uh, you know, and theories why that happens. But we have experience. We, we see things and they either make sense or they don't make sense. And what the, the scientists do is substitute our, our common sense and our intuition for calculations and theory. And we're supposed to believe the calculations rather than what we experience uh, ourselves.